Brothers and sisters, as we all know, the whole world is gripped by fear. I don't know about you, but I believe for you it's different because I think you have heard a lot of encouragement telling you not to fear. But come to think of it, is fear such a bad thing after all? Say for example, you discover that you have fever. Do you not fear that you have been infected? Surely, it will cause you to go for a test and seek early treatment. And it will cause you to take precautions not to infect your family. So, fear is good because it causes you to take action, either fight or flight. Now, fear is the initial instinctive response to a threat. It is a primary emotion. And you are born with this emotion. It is our survival mechanism. But, if the threat is not real, the threat is imaginary, then it is not so good. Say, for example, you think that without any mask, you will surely be infected. So, you worry, you want to buy all the masks that you can buy. You begin to do panic buying. And you're so worried that you can't sleep. So, worry, panic are secondary emotions after the primary emotion that is the first initial uh, response. Now, these secondary emotions are more long-lasting and of course in this case it's undesirable. So fear can be beneficial or detrimental. Now God has something to say about fear and so this morning we will turn to Isaiah chapter 7 and chapter 8 to see what God has to say. So Isaiah chapter 7 opens with this. When Ahaz became king of Judah, the king of Syria and king of Israel attacked Jerusalem. And Ahaz and his people became terrified. They were trembling with fear. Now, was this fear healthy? Well, it did cause him to take action. But what action could he take? And in the end, what action did he take? What were his choices? And in the end, what did he choose to do? Well, apparently, he cannot fight back because if he can fight back, he need not fear. Well, another option is to turn to God for help. And indeed, without his pleading for help, God told him through Isaiah, told him not to fear, but to stand firm in his faith, because the invasion will not be successful. God even gave him a sign of assurance, and this sign is the sign of Emmanuel, found in chapter 7, verse 14. Now the sign of Emmanuel is of course related to the birth of Lord of the Lord Jesus Christ. But during the time of Ahaz, there was an immediate fulfillment. Now even with this sign, Ahaz did not believe in God. He rejected God's offer of an assurance. And this is not surprising because Ahaz was an evil king. Now if he had believed in God's assurance, his fears would have been dispelled and he would have peace of mind. But he didn't. And his primary emotion of fear turned into the secondary emotions of worry and panic. 
So, not wanting to seek help from God, what did he do? What other choice could he take? Well, he sought help from Tiglath Pileser, the Assyrian king, paying him silver and gold. And this is found in 2 Kings chapter 16. Now, was the Assyrian king of any help to him? What do you think? Well, he was. According to 2 Kings 16, he did help Ahaz to quash the attack. But there's more to it, to it. In 2 Chronicles chapter 28, it detailed another attack from the Edomites and Philistines. And in this case, Ahaz also sought help from Tiglath Pileser. But this time, the Assyrian king did not help him. He attacked him. And of course, the Assyrian overwhelmed Judah. And this was allowed by God to punish Judah. But the Bible says in chapter 8, verse 7 to 10, this attack only reached up to the neck of Judah. It will not destroy her, for God is with them. So then God told Isaiah not to fear what the people fear. Chapter 8, verse 12. Don't be like these people, always afraid somebody is plotting against them. Don't fear what they fear. Don't take on their worries. So what did the people fear? Well, the people of Judah feared death at the hands of the enemies. They feared the unknown because their future is uncertain. They fear humiliation because of defeat. They fear rejection. They fear that the Assyrian king will reject their offer of money to help them. And they fear captivity by the enemy. So these are basic human fears. And I group them into five main categories. First, the fear of separation. Death, divorce, breakup, migration. Fear of loss of control, poor health, old age, and the unknown. Fear of loss of ego, embarrassment, humiliation, shame, hurt, pride. Fear of rejection, abandonment, loneliness, and fear of restriction, being trapped physically, emotionally, imprisonment, and even commitment. Commitment to marriage, commitment to church ministry, the fear of being tied down and uh, uh, having no freedom. And in addition, the last part of chapter 8 sounds a warning of judgment to those who consult mediums and fortune tellers. Those who do this are fearful of the unknown future and of the bad things that may befall them. They want to know the future and not only that, they want to change the future to avert disaster. So they consult soothsayers and sorcerers. Oh, Mr. C. Future, when will this pandemic end? What's in store for me in the future? Okay, let me look at my crystal ball. Hmm, I can see that the pandemic will end on my next birthday. And not only that, I see that you are in trouble. Miss Corona will come and kiss you and you will be on the brink of death. But don't be afraid. I can help you. I can perform some rituals and you will get yourself out of trouble. But you have to pay me 100,000 ringgit. Wow! Sai Musaya, this is pricey! Hey, do you know that I have to invoke the power of the God to help you. The more the payment, the more the power. This is the matter of life and death. So, raise your money 
even if you have to pawn your wife. So this is the fearful man and the fortune teller. So instead of fearing what the people fear, Isaiah was told it is the Lord God Almighty whom he should fear. Isaiah 8 verse 13. But remember that the Lord of heaven's armies is holy. He is the one you should fear. He is the one you should dread. What does it mean to fear God? The fear of God is, first of all, a deep feeling of respect and reverence for Him because of who He is. A conscious acknowledgement of His power and authority over us. And a conscious acknowledgement of our utter dependence on Him. Consider our Mata Mata and Ibu Bapa. We have respect for them, for the authority they have, for the role they play, for the responsibilities they bear, and for the sacrifices they make. We acknowledge their authority over us. They can advise us when we make mistakes. They can warn us when we step out of line, and they can punish us when we misbehave. And because of their power and authority, we depend on them for safety, for protection, for guidance, for provision. With the police around, you won't find snatch thieves and COVID carriers roaming the streets. With the parents around, a child will feel safe and will not cry. So, a person who does not fear the police and defies his order is a troublemaker and a child who does not fear his parents and throws a tantrum is a nuisance so the fear of god does not cause us to be paralyzed or run away rather it causes us to make wise decisions ahas did not fear god he had no respect for god and he dismissed his offer of a sign. He ignored the fact that God has the power to punish him and he did not depend on God for deliverance from his enemies. And also in chapter 8 verse 14 says, For those who fear him, he will be a place of safety. But for those who don't, he will be a stumbling stone and a trap. And in contrast to Ahaz, Isaiah expressed his trust in God. Chapter 8, verse 17. Job 37, verse 21 to 24 says, Now no one can look at the sun, right as it is in the skies, after the wind has swept them clean. Out of the north he comes in golden splendor. God comes in awesome majesty. The Almighty is beyond our reach and exalted in power. In his justice and great righteousness, he does not oppress. Therefore people revere him, for does he not have regard for all the wise in heart? So God is awesome and full of power and authority, yet he is also just and righteous. He does not misuse or abuse his power, just like some of our Mata Mata and Ibu Bapa do. Therefore, we fear Him. So, fear not. Do not fear. Be not afraid. Do not be afraid. These are all phrases found throughout the Bible. God says, Fear not, for I am with you. And here I am giving you a sample of scripture verses presenting this promise. Now the wordings may be different for each, but the idea is the same. So, check them out. So, the presence of God alone, even without His doing anything yet, is sufficient. In Mark chapter 4, verse 40, we see that the opposite of fear is faith. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Why are you frightened? Do you still have no faith? 
so have faith in him therefore fear not fear God God is the one we are to fear in summary Godly fear drives us to have faith in God's promise of Emmanuel, which in turn drives out fear. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we pray that our fear will be the fear of you and not of anything else. That we will cling to your promise of Emmanuel, for you have said, Fear not, for I am with you. Help us, Lord, to have faith in you to weather the storm. Grant us the peace that surpasses our understanding and the fullness of joy. Keep us physically, mentally, and spiritually strong. In Jesus' name, Amen. So right now, let's sing a song to be used as a prayer and a response to God's word. Let's sing, Whom Shall I Fear? and sisters receive the benediction the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord turn his face toward you and give you peace amen <laughs>